I feel like one of the hardest things with historical fashion is finding shoes to go with your outfit. And they often end up being extremely expensive. And so for that reason, it's actually really convenient to be able to DIY your own pair of shoes. But before I get into that, I wanted to introduce you all to my new family member. We adopted a rescue puppy from Romania maybe about a month ago, and she's six or seven months old. We're not really quite sure because she was a stray, so we don't really have a lot of information about when she was born. But I thought I would show her to you all on the channel. Here, Runa. So this is our puppy. Her name is Runa and she's very sweet. We don't really know what she is yet, but we did give her a little DNA test. So yeah, she's very cute and sweet and you'll probably end up seeing her in some future videos. She likes to play a lot and it's kind of driving us a little bit insane, but overall she's a really sweet little girl and yeah, we really love having her. Come here, Runa. Wanna say hi? Do you want to say hi? <laughs> there you go. Oops. So now that you've got your fill of puppy content for the day, I want to talk about how you can take a pair of modern shoes and make them feel more historical. So that way you can actually make them match your various ensembles. And because it's so affordable to get the base and you can find really good deals, it doesn't end up breaking the bank. The key to making a modern shoe look historical is to find a good base. What you're going to be looking for is a few various things. The first thing being the heel shape. So a lot of historical shoes tend to have a slightly curved heel shape, especially for Georgian and Victorian shoes as well, and including some Edwardian. So because of that, it is helpful to look for either French heel or curved heel or Louis heel. It could be called any of those things if you look at a place like eBay. The way I actually found my pair of shoes that I'm going to be using for this demonstration is on eBay and I just searched up curved heel. In the UK we have this brand called Hotter and they tend to make sort of vintage-esque Victorian looking shoes. They're very loosely interpreted, of course, so they're very much just inspired, but they make a really great and affordable base for a more historical DIY project. And I'm sure there are similar types of brands all over the world that make these vintage inspired shoes. The next thing to look at is your toe shape. So you're going to want to pull up a photo of the kind of shoe that you're going for, for whatever decade, and check out what the toe looks like. So does it have a round toe, a pointed toe, a square toe, and then you're going to actually look for examples like this on eBay. So personally, I needed a more rounded toe. So once I had all my curved heeled options in my size on eBay, I then decided to just kind of manually look through all the options and decide which one had a more curved toe. For certain periods that require square shoes, sometimes you can get old ballet flats that are actually blunt at the top and these make for a really good option and in general too there tends to be a lot of modern creative liberty when it comes to making various styles of shoes so there's a good chance that you're probably going to find something that is somewhat in your area that you need. The third thing to look for is the closure style so do you want a sort of side strap do you want no strap at all or do you maybe want a ballet flat that has laces that go all the way up the leg. All of these styles you can find throughout historical periods so as you go through your searches again you want to narrow it down to various options that have the right closure style for what you're going for too. There are a number of secondhand marketplaces online where you can get used shoes and a lot of them have never even been worn before so they're in really good condition. I think I got this pair for maybe like 20 quid or something like that so really not that much money at all. The process of converting these shoes from modern into historical that I'm about to show you is actually the first part of a really big ensemble that I'm currently hand sewing and I'm going to introduce it to you all now because by the end of this video you're definitely going to know what it is and so I am making a grape gown it is going to be an 1890 evening ensemble but more of a renaissance revival which you tend to see in that later part of the Victorian period so I'm really excited to make it it has a ton of components I've already made a bunch of them and I'm just continuing to do so and of course I also have to have matching shoes but I didn't know where I would find purple and green shoes so I had to make my own so now I'm going to switch over to voiceover Vossi and explain the entire process, all the tools I needed, and how exactly I converted this beautiful pair of shoes into a historical version. Before we jump into things, I should mention that at the end of the day, we are trying to take a modern pair of shoes and make it more historical. I know I refer to them as historical shoes, but really we're just trying to do our best to mimic history as much as possible, and we aren't going to shape or change the actual foundation of the shoe. 
For this reason, they're never going to be close replicas, but they can be passing enough for various events or even day-to-day -day wear. This definitely isn't a one-shoe-fits-all solution, no pun intended, <laughs> but it is a fun way to DIY your own more historical-looking shoes. This is a process that you can also take a lot of creative liberty with. So for that reason, I'm going to show you the steps that I took to transform my own pair of shoes, but you may want to do something completely different for your pair. I think the primary components to really create a transformation is paint or dye, and decorations or embellishments. With my own shoes, I started by gathering my supplies. I purchased these very high quality leather paints, which are specifically designed to change the color of leather. Since my palette for my ensemble is purple and green, I went with these colors and you can mix them together like usual paint, so I bought a couple of shades of green. I actually ended up disliking the green shade in the end and repainted it to a different color, but you'll see that happening later on in the video. I also purchased this primer and finisher, which just helps to create both a foundation and a final coat for the shoes so that they can keep much longer. And of course, I needed a selection of paintbrushes. I also grabbed some silk scraps for the decoration part, and the most important supplies, the safety equipment. I decided to wear safety goggles, gloves, and a mask just to make sure I wasn't breathing in any fumes, mainly for the primer part because there was very strong acetone involved. And lastly, I have these beautiful vintage grape shoe clips. I obviously bought them because of the grape theme, and I thought the tiny grapes were just so adorable. Shoe clips first appeared in the 18th century, where they existed as a way to spruce up a limited shoe collection, so someone could own multiple sets of shoe clips, but only a couple pairs of shoes. They were quite popular throughout the Victorian period as well, and there was a revival of them in the 1950s. They just helped to embellish a shoe further and give it that more historical vibe. Another great option, if you don't want to use shoe clips, is shoe buckles, which were prominent throughout the 17th, 18th, 19th, and early 20th centuries. And of course, as we've already established, you'll need your actual shoe base, which in my case is a simple off-white with a curved heel and rounded toe. I took a rag with the acetone primer and just began to work away the factory finish on the shoes, and you can visibly see something coming off here on the rag. They looked a little bit less shiny once done, which I guess is what I was going for. Then it was time to go in with the violet paint. This isn't an exact match to my fabric for the ensemble, but I feel like it's close enough and it probably won't be terribly noticeable. These leather paints work the same as regular paints, and you just brush them on. Two to three thin coats is better than a single thick coat, so I'm layering the paint to create a cleaner finish. I'm avoiding the scallop edging because I'm going to paint that green actually to create a little bit of a contrast and also to tie in with the grape theme a little bit more. After a single coat, it still needed quite a bit more paint, so I added a second coat and even a third. Then I mixed together the green paint by combining two colors, which of course I didn't even stick with in the end, but the process is the same nonetheless. I just carefully brushed the paint on in a few layers on the scallops, trying not to touch the purple, but at the end I touched up any mistakes regardless, so it didn't really matter. Here it is after one coat, and here it is after a second and third. A couple of days later, my new green color arrived, a little bit more of an olive tone this time, which is one of the shades featured in the grape gown. I went through the same process and just painted over the scallops with the olive paint using a couple of layers, and then touched up the mistakes by dabbing just a little bit of the purple paint. The final painting step was applying the finisher. Now this company sells shiny, matte, and regular finish, so I went with the regular because I wasn't particularly attached to having shiny nor matte shoes. So much like the other painting went, I waited about two days for the paint to fully dry, and then applied the finisher with a light coat. I ended up only needing about one layer, though I touched up some spots with a second coat, and this just helped to seal everything in and complete the base layer of the shoe. For decoration, I wanted to use silk scraps from the detachable train I'm making to fashion some sort of grape leaf looking design. I wasn't really sure how to go about doing this and the internet wasn't proving particularly helpful, so I just cut out a couple strips with pinking shears and started to fold them in various ways. I tried one thing and another and another, finally realizing the leaf I was working on was way too big proportionally for the shoe. So I took my pinking shears again and trimmed down the sides to create thinner strips. Then I folded the pieces once more and was fairly happy with the way the leaf was looking. I made a few adjustments and sewed the pieces together just with some random running stitches. Then I just needed to position the ribbon and shoe clip onto the actual shoe. 
I placed it on the side because I felt like it balanced the shoe out a little bit better. And finally, the shoes were completely done. I think they look so adorable and they're really going to help tie the entire ensemble together. I definitely won't be wearing these socks with them though, but I didn't feel like changing my stockings specifically for this video. I'm very excited for you all to see the other components of the gown. As time goes on, I'll be releasing them over the course of the next couple of months. And most of all, I'm really excited to actually get to wear this gown. As you can see here, Runa also decided to come in for a little visit. She decided to nip me a bunch because she's in that puppy stage where she constantly wants to play. And a lot of that just involves nipping. She is so, so sweet though, and we feel very lucky to have her. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I transformed this modern pair of shoes into something a little more historical. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in two weeks for another video.